everyone, my name is Anagha and I'm part of the data science discovery team and in this video today we're going to be simulating uh, flipping two coins in Python using simulations. So let's go ahead and get started. So it says here, write a simulation Python to simulate flipping two coins, each of which can land on either heads or tails. Basically run the simulation 10,000 times and then store and return your results in the data frame with the columns coin one and coin two. <clears throat> so we have kind of three main goals to achieve here, right? The first main goal is to create some sort of cumulative data structure, right? Which is going to store all of these 10,000 results, right? 10,000 um, basically flips, results of my coin flips that I got, right? So, so the first thing is to uh, declare some sort of cumulative data structure to store uh, results. And I'm going to go ahead and create a list to store my results, right? So this is how you kind of declare an empty list in Python, right? It's just opening and closed parentheses. And basically our goal is for each simulation, we're just gonna kind of add our our results to this list. So by the end of that, by the end of all of our 10,000 simulations, this list will have all of our 10,000 results. And at the very end, we can kind of, at the very end, right, we can um, use the data list and convert to a data frame, <clears throat> right? This data list, which stores all of our 10,000 results of these um, flipping two coins each, right? All these results can then be converted into a data frame. So, so that's kind of the logic here, right? And the middle is what we're going to do our like perform our simulations. Right, and here we're going to go ahead and use a for loop because in each iteration of our for loop represents one simulation, which is basically flipping these two coins, right? Um, so there's going to be, you know, flipping these two coins and in each iteration, we're going to go ahead and record our results and add them to this data list, which will contain finally all of our 10,000 simulations of flipping two coins each, right? So uh, to kind of declare that for loop in Python, it's just for i in range. And since we want to do this, run the simulation 10,000 times, there's going to be 10,000 iterations of that for loop. And kind of the first thing to do here, right, is basically simulate flipping two coins. So I'm going to call my results coin one and, and coin two, right? So, so for coin one, it's basically the result of uh, flipping a coin with either heads or tails, right? So I'm gonna use my random.choice because I know I'm dealing with strings, heads or tails, and I basically want to pick a random element, either heads or tails from this list, right? So my list is going to contain the possible options from my coin flips, which is heads or tails, and my coin one will basically contain all of these, um, basically all of these, uh, you, you know, that random element from this list, basically the result of my coin flip. But that's coin one, right? We're flipping two coins. So basically, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and have coin two, which is going to be the same thing. Random.choice heads or tails is basically going to store the result of my second coin flip. So, okay, now I have done these two coin flips, right? What am I going to do with them? Well, I need to store them in a dictionary first. And we'll kind of see the, the implication of this, the purpose of this later, right? But I'm going to store these results in a dictionary. And this is how we create an empty dictionary in Python, which is opening and curling, opening and closing curly braces. And basically, in Python, the syntax for the dictionary is it's going to have a bunch of key value pairs, right? So it's going to be key one, value one. It's it's basically like a dictionary. So it kind of sounds like what it is, right? How do you search things up in a dictionary? Well, you have key, like you have a key that you search, right? And then that key is associated with some sort of value. And a dictionary can have as many of those key value pairs as you want, right? Here, we want two of them because we want to store the results of our two coin flips. So our dictionary will have two of these key value pairs. 
This is me, key one, value one, comma, key two, value two. And notice how I'm kind of separating these with a comma and separating the key and values with the colon here. So again, the key is going to be, um, it's going to be coin one. And then that's our value um, will be the result of that first coin flip, which was stored in this coin one variable, right? And if I call this random result coin one, right, I would have had to write the same random result coin one here. It just depends on whatever you call your variable, right? I just called mine coin one to be kind of um, concise. And then our second key value pair is going to be coin two. And then uh, which is going to store the result of our second coin flip, which is stored in this coin two variable. And you'll see why later that we have to name these coin one, coin two. And it's partly because in our uh, data frame, the columns should be called coin one and coin two. Right. So now I have this dictionary that I have defined, which has stored my coin one result, my coin one flip result, and my coin two flip result. But what do I do with that dictionary, right? I can't just keep I can't just keep creating new dictionaries in each iteration of my data frame or in each iteration of my for loop. I need to store those somewhere. Well, I'm going to go ahead and store these uh, results in my cumulative data structure called data, right? This cumulative data structure list, which I declared in the very beginning of my program. So as we're kind of doing our iterations, as we're flipping more and more coins, we want to go ahead and keep adding those results to this cumulative data dictionary. So by the end, we have the basically 10,000 of these dictionaries um, that we, you know, made in each simulation. So here, the last thing to do in the for loop is basically doing data.append because I'm appending to this data list, to this cumulative data list here, my dictionary that I just created, which contains the results of my first and second coin flip. So, so at the very end now is my kind of step three, using my data list and converting, converting to data frame. So I'm gonna use the pd.dataframe function. So I wanna do df equals pd.dataframe. And what am I converting to a data frame? Well, it's this cumulative data list that we defined in the very beginning, right? So if I actually go ahead and print out data, <coughs> which is that list, not the data frame, just data, it's going to have basically 10,000 of these key value pairs, right? As we can see here, we have coin one. This, this was for uh, simulation one here, this right here, right? We have coin one um, was heads. The result of our first coin flip was heads. The result of our second coin flip was also heads, right? And then we have our result of our second simulation here. The result of the first coin flip was heads and the result of the second coin flip was tails. So similarly, we have 10,000 of these in the dictionary pairs. So when we're actually converting this data list into a data frame, that first key is the the first column coin one which will store all of the values for the first column coin one right and that second entry the coin two is basically all the values for our second column called coin two which is going to be heads tails and, and so on so when i print data frame kind of this is what i get right basically condenses that entire diction entire list into a data frame where the the first entry right here is whatever gets stored in my first column. And the second entry here is whatever gets stored in my second column. So, um, you know, I, I think this is basically what the question asks, right? It just asks us to simulate flipping these two coins 10,000 times. We um, store these random results into a dictionary and in each iteration, we append this dictionary to a data list, which we then convert into a data frame. So uh, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye.